Hi. Hello, everyone. We are so happy that you are here today to watch uh, the Vespers that that has been prepared. We want to go ahead and pray before we start so that God can lead us through this program. So if you um, close your eyes and let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love, your mercies. Thank you because you have given us another week well, where we know that you were with us. Thank you because you now give us a Sabbath day where we can rest and um, most importantly, rest in your name. Please be with my friends that are watching uh, and also please give them um, that blessed Sabbath and just time for us to to come and and hear your word please open your please open our hearts and our minds to receive this and also share it in your name i pray amen and this this um afternoon we have abby who will be having the special music today and after that we have a very special guest her name's kenya reyes and uh i'm gonna go ahead and and let that video play with the special music. Hello and happy Sabbath, everyone. Today joining me is my younger brother, Anthony. Hello. For God's glory. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. You have no rifle, you have no now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is a kingdom. Yours is a glory. Yours is a name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.
Hello and good evening and happy Sabbath to everyone. My name is Kenia Reyes and it is a pleasure to be able to be with you guys tonight and to be able to share just a little bit about the wonders that we can find in the Word of God. So today I want to bring you something, a message that really has spoken to me uh, for a long time, a message that I think can speak to all of us, no matter what moment we're going through in our lives, if we're, you know, just dealing with everything that's happening in the world right now, or if maybe we have more going on than what the eye can see. And today's message that I'm bringing to you, and I promise it won't be a very long one, it's just kind of straight to the point, but it's titled Rescue Me. Mission Rescue. Okay, so let's start with just a word of prayer first, so that way we can make it straight to the message. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your wonders, Lord. We want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your mercy and your love, Lord. This moment, we want to ask that you forgive our sins, Lord, that you purify us, Lord, that you make us clean, that you make us holy like you, Lord. We ask that your presence will be with us and that as we go into your word, we can discover all the ways that you are constantly trying to rescue us and trying to demonstrate your love. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So today I'm going to bring you a story that I know that pretty much everybody knows, but I'm going to just kind of go into detail about some specific things that I think that sometimes we might miss when we just say, oh yeah, that story, I've heard that story ever since I was a kid, right? Because when I say Daniel, I think everyone goes, yeah, I know the story of Daniel. And I say, yeah, his three friends, yeah, I know about the fire and I know about them not being burned. What else is new, right? But today, I want us to take a little pause and actually read what the story says, and most importantly, apply it to our own lives. Now, what I would like to share before we jump in is my own rescue mission once upon a time. And this was actually that really something that really happened to me, and it was kind of crazy. I am originally from, uh, well, my parents are originally from Guatemala. Guatemala is in Central America. And I remember one time I went and I was seven years old and I went to visit and we went to this one beach that had crazy big waves. And I remember that my grandmother came to me and my cousin and she said, be very careful because the ocean can be like very treacherous, right? That at any moment it can just switch up on me. And I remember I was like, hey grandma, anyways, <laughs> and I kept digging my feet into the sand. And it was honestly in just like five seconds and all of a sudden there's this huge wave just taking me and my cousin and my grandmother into the water. And it was by far the scariest situation that I've ever lived. And I remember that while the water was just tossing and turning me everywhere, what felt like an eternity, but honestly it was probably like around two minutes or less, I remember I was crying out and screaming out for my mom. My mom was back in New York where we lived and she really did not know what was going on. <laughs> but unfortunately, fortunately for me, my uncle, he came into the water and I remember he grabbed me by my hair. That's how he saved me, by my hair. So I'm very thankful for these long locks because once upon a time, they saved my life. And I remember that I was just so scared and, and it was just the most craziest moment and I had no idea you know, what was happening. And I definitely was not expecting to be rescued. At that point, I had kind of given up because the waves just kept coming. And I definitely was not expecting the rescue that came with the whole almost drowning thing. I never thought that somebody would rescue me by grabbing me by my hair. But I guess we can say that God also has these unexpected ways to rescue us, right? God has done things never in the way that we would predict for someone to do. I mean, we do know that he sent his one and only son, something completely unexpected, because I don't know how many of us would give our children or our loved ones to die for other people who would not even be grateful about it. So God has always found different ways to be able to protect his children and to save them. And the story of Daniel and his three friends, well, most importantly, his three friends, because Daniel kind of just 
isn't in the story. But what we find there is that there is also an unexpected rescue, that God didn't save them in the way that we would all expect them to be saved, right? He did something a little bit different. If we go to Daniel 3, we find that this is where Nebuchadnezzar is talking about this really, really big statue. And he's telling everyone that they have to bow down to it. And if not, they're going to be thrown into uh, this fiery furnace. And we see that Daniel's three friends, they decide that they are not going to bow down, that they're going to stand firm. And I think if we were watching this movie, right, if this was a movie and we don't know the end of the story, we don't know what happens, we would say, oh, my gosh, now they're going to stand up. But they say they believe in God and they talk about this powerful God. So obviously it's so predictable. God is not going to let that happen. Like he's going to shoot lightning from the sky and no fiery furnace, you know, or he's going to scoop them up and take them somewhere else. So they won't even step foot in the fire. But when we start reading what actually happens, we see, starting in verse 19, that Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he tells them that they're going to be thrown in the furnace. And not only that, but he requests that the fire is hotter than what it originally was. He tells them that it needed to be heated seven times hotter than usual. And then verse 20, I hope you have your Bibles open. Daniel 3.20 says, then he orders some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them in the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And so it says in verse 22, and I think this is very important, it says, because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. Now, we see here, right, that they get thrown into the fire. They still have their coats on. The king has demanded for the fire to be even hotter than it is. And we do know, right, because we do know the end of the story, that they get thrown in. And when they're inside, right, Nebuchadnezzar looks inside. In verse 25, he says, you know, well, 24, sorry. He says, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into this furnace? And they respond, yes, your majesty, we certainly did. So then in verse 25, Nebuchadnezzar says, look, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Isn't that amazing? Like just talking about it kind of gives me goosebumps to see how God shows up and not in a small way. God shows up in a big way, right? And he saves them in a way that we are not expecting him to be saved. Because sometimes we're going through things and we ask God by prayer. We say, God, can you please just like not let me go through this? I don't want to go through this anymore. Or I really don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. And I know that sometimes we struggle with the fact that God doesn't take us out of a situation. That sometimes he doesn't stop the situation from happening. And that can be very frustrating. And I know that I've gone through it and I'm positive that one of you has gone through it. Maybe you're going through it right now where you're really telling God and you're struggling with something and you're like, God, help me out. Like, get me out of this situation because it is a fiery furnace. And just like we were talking about, if this was a movie, one of those action movies, we would be expecting that if they're talking so big about their God, then that means that God is going to come in and not let them step foot in the furnace. And yet we see that that is completely different from what actually happens. He does let them go through the furnace. They go inside. They're in the midst of the flames. But the powerful thing about it is that in the middle of that fiery furnace, in the middle of their hardest moment, of their biggest trial, in the middle of the fire, there was a fourth one. God was with them. And that is the message that I want to bring to each of you. That maybe God is not going to rescue you from something because maybe your real rescue is going to happen when you go through something. Maybe he needs you to know and to remind you that he's going to be with you always. And in the Bible, it tells us that there will be many tribulations, but don't worry. Worry not for all of these bad things that are going to happen for everyone who is going to be against you. Remember that he has promised to be with you always. God has said that he will be with you always, that he will give you strength and that all things are possible through him. So maybe you're going through your own fiery furnace 
and you feel forgotten and you feel frustrated and you feel angry with God. And that's understandable. But sometimes we have to realize that our rescue is happening even inside that fiery furnace. The powerful thing is that when uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, which I think is so bizarre, they came out and it says that the, their clothes, their hair did not even burn a fire. So I just want to let you know that if you're going through something right now and you're thinking about how difficult it is and you're also thinking about the aftermath of it all, I want to let you know that we serve a God that won't even allow us to smell of the heat. If we trust in him, if we hold on to him, if we see the rescue happening even in the midst of the fire, we will smell a victory. No matter what situation we're going through and no matter how low we think we've fallen, if we hold on to God, we will smell a victory. We won't even smell of the thing that we went through, the thing that really, you know, destroyed our lives or broke our hearts. But one last thing I would love to just mention is actually found way before the whole uh, appearance, physical appearance of God in the flame. And that was when I mentioned verse 22. You know, sometimes we'll focus so much on the fact that when we were in our worst moments, God came through and he saved us because we're seeing it, right? We're seeing it happen. But so many times we are not able to see that God has been working all along, that maybe we didn't see his physical action or appearance like we saw it there with the three, uh, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that all of a sudden we see in verse 25 that he's there. But did that mean he wasn't there from before? Verse 22 says that the soldiers who had taken Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the furnace all died as they put them into the furnace. Why didn't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego die as they got closer? Why did the soldiers die as they got closer as a result of the intense heat from the furnace? Because God was with them, not just in verse 25 when they were able to witness it, but God was with them, verse 22, verse 23, verse 24. And he promises to be with you, not only in this chapter of your life, but he's been with you from the beginning. And he promises to be with you until the end. So I hope that we are able to open our eyes more to see the rescue mission that God is trying to complete in our lives. That he has already begun this work in us and he is faithful to complete it. And if maybe you're not seeing him take you out of a situation or take your family out of a situation, maybe you feel like you're drowning, maybe you feel like you're burning. Remember that the same God who stood with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace is the same God that stands with you in your fiery furnace. That's the same God that will not allow you to smell of defeat, but to smell of victory if you trust in him. And that is the same God who has not just been there when everything is resolved, but had been there from the beginning when you were sad, when you were frustrated, when you felt lost, when you felt abandoned, when you felt angry. He was already there. He is the same God who promises to be there with you until the end. I really hope that this uh, little piece of a magnificent story is a blessing for each and every one of you, that you are reminded that God is with you and has promised to always be with us. And that no matter if our rescue mission doesn't seem like it's being answered, if we're calling out for help and it doesn't seem like anyone is listening, he's listening. He's right there with you. How about we say a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for just how amazing you are how you constantly are trying to rescue us, Lord, how you are constantly trying to save us, Lord, and how sometimes you save us as we go through our fiery furnace instead of avoiding that fiery furnace. We thank you because you have promised that if we trust in you, if we believe in you, if we call out to you, Lord, that you will be with us. We are faithful to you. You will stand with us in our hardest tribulations, in our fiery furnace, Lord. And you promised in Isaiah that we would walk through fire and we would not be burned. And we saw that with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we claim that now for our own lives. We want to thank you because we know that you are with us in this chapter and that you have been with us in the previous chapters of our lives, and you will continue to be with us, Lord. We ask that you allow us to smell not of defeat, but of victory, because we are your children. We claim that victory 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be with us for the rest of the Sabbath, Lord. Please accompany us and let us feel your presence, that we may feel your peace, Lord, and your comfort. We love you, Lord. We thank you because we know that you love us and that you are always demonstrating your love, your care for us, and just pouring out your blessings on each of us. Please be with everyone who is listening right now and bless their lives. And Lord, I just ask that you help us each and every day to trust in you and to be able to see the wonders of your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a great Sabbath. Have a good night. It was so nice to be with you.